Elvis cards had a creepy visitor. We had a female Canada Post delivery woman here. Actually, the one that delivered your package, and she left. Came back later because she had another package from Joni's mom that she didn't know she had in the truck. It was a pretty hot day here, and she wanted to come in for some water. And I was like, no fucking way. But Joni said, sure, come on in, and gave her some ginger ale. Anyway, she's drinking my ginger ale, and I was looking at the cards, and she goes, what's that? And she's not cute. And I was like, they're Elvis playing cards. And she says, very matter of fact, is he naked? And I was like, uh, sorry, no, but you can pretend. BNR stands for Boyle, Norman, and Roberts. They have a new album out called Where We Live and Where We Are. This is the third track. It's called Fuck. Fucking yo. Fucking yo. Whose job should it be to listen all day to dirty records and decide whether you can? Do you want censorship of records, or do you want to make the decision on your own? This whole business started with words. We're talking about words here. Do you think that you're protecting somebody by taking away seven words? Why do you underestimate the power of words? Words have uh, consequences. They have impact on people. Can't we call on our government to help us in this fight, Frank? I mean, you have kids. Are you an anarchist? Is it the government's role to do nothing about this? We're talking about words, and I don't believe that there is any word that needs to be suppressed. Words connote ideas. Huh? Yes, they can be assembled yeah. in the sentences that get yeah. ideas. Well, how about answering my question about incest? Founding fathers, for one thing, kept slaves. And take a look at what Benjamin Franklin used to do over at the Hellfire Club. Do you think the Founding Fathers gave us the First Amendment to defend songs that glorify Satanism and incest and suicide? You really believe Absolutely. that? Absolutely. You really believe yeah, that? Yeah, I believe that. Oh, people like you with these lyrics. Yeah, how much money you made peddling this stuff, Mr. Zappa? Millions of dollars. Yeah. We must not see eye to eye on the idea of a government that must forbid things.
The biggest threat to America today is not communism. It's moving America toward a fascist theocracy. And everything that's happened during the Reagan administration is steering us right down that pipe. Do you think when, when I was a kid that they would permit songs like that to be sold? I mean, permissiveness is the game. When you have a government that prefers a certain moral code derived from a certain religion, and that moral code turns into legislation to suit one certain religious point of view, and if that code happens to be very, very right-wing, almost toward well, until the Hun, well, then you are an anarchist. Every form of civil government is based on some kind of morality, right? this hearing last September that in America, quote, there is a tendency to hide sex, unquote. That is the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard. Sex is everywhere in America. It's on TV, radio, videos, advertising. What do you mean we hide sex in America? This argument basically is about the seven dirty words that the FCC complains yeah. about. And that's what it is. I don't see any reason to keep people from hearing those syllables put together. The big one, the one that starts with the F, has maybe about 15 different ways in which it can be used in language. The music starts, the teacher takes off her clothes, and she's wearing some kind of a bathing suit, like in a beauty contest, and does a dance on the desk, and the kids look up, and they are having a good time. Well, that's just a real laugh, right? They had some kids from New York picketing outside who were from a school for the mentally disturbed, and they said that they all, that rock music almost ruined their life. Rock music really disturbed them. Didn't that give you some pause as to maybe you were making, if you, were, you might be an error on, on this question? Well, see, you're an error as to where those kids came from. It's not a school for the mentally disturbed. It is a place called Freedom Village run by a man named Pastor Fletcher A. Brothers. A Christian organization he collects money for it. They have a farm in upstate New York. Well, let me tell you some of the things that are included in this man's literature. He sends out this folder that's about this thick that has a list of different people in rock and roll, their names, their records, and their crime against humanity, so to speak. Some of the people who are included in this list are Stevie Wonder, and his crime is that he has an album that mentions astrology. In his folder, there are two or three mentions of astrology and maybe three or four mentions of Hinduism. He cites the Who uh, because they had a, a Hindu prayer on one of their albums. And I'm going to mention them on the air. Let me, let me, let me ask you about something you said. No, I, I, I want to talk to you. Talk for a little while, okay? This the whole business started with words. We're talking about words here. Do you think that you're protecting somebody by taking away seven words? The most ridiculous statement I've ever heard. The big one, the one that starts with the F, has 15 different ways in which it can be used in language. Who's to be the censor? Should you be? One of the things I don't understand is someone who writes, uh, why you have repeatedly denigrated words and said, well, something's just words. You know, Adolf Hitler used words very effectively. It was called a big lie. Parents are going to tell their kids what they what they can and what they can't. It's not just words. We see no meaning in life. That the hope is in register. We have millions of kids in this country, Frank, who may be suicidal. We see no meaning in life. We see no hope in life. And you're going to tell them that the hope is in registering to vote, Frank? Are you serious? Are you trying to dissuade them from registering to vote? Are you trying to dissuade those kids from running for office? Is that what you're doing? songs that portray incest as just another kind of sex? That is the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard. This isn't anything against the salt of the earth. You know those in this shelf. They try so hard. Barking up trees they didn't plant, tussling against tides they only see. So they work hard and medicate and fuck a lot. 
Mark is one. Fielding phone calls, lending light, temp work, daily pay. Rachel cleans houses when she can. Two kids with two fathers. Mom's in detox. Dad's dead with bills. She hopes the Toyota starts, so when Mark meets Rachel early Friday, drunk and throwing darts, American Hope springs desperate. They lay naked, sweaty, spent, salting the earth. Hey, this is Pat from Loath Motors. Come on down, get a deal on a goddamn good deal. If we can't make a deal, then you're just not worth it. Sweet endings. Why is the best shit at the end? The end of a ride, roller coaster or other? When you want another go? At the end of a game? When you want just one more inning? At the end of a relationship? When you want just one more chance? At the end of a perfect night? Wishing you could start over again? At the end of a bottle or a bag of your personal poison? When you wish you could just start over? and enjoy what you had at the beginning, just a little more. That was The Professor, reading out of My Midnight Mind by Patrick Daly. We'll be back for the second half of our show in just a moment. 